Do you have an old robot vacuum cleaner lying around? Me too. Well, at least I did until I turned it into a capable RC robot platform. Then things got a little bit weird because I used AI to convert a video screen cap to a 3D model and ended up bringing this creation to life. Strap yourself in because this video has some varied and unusual content. At its heart, it's about breathing new life into an obsolete robot vacuum cleaner, which is easier than you might think. But then I went down the rabbit hole and found that you can convert a single 2D image into a 3D model, then export that for 3D printing. Hopefully there's something in here for everyone, so let's get started. This is a Samsung Navibot, a robot vacuum cleaner. This is not my footage, but once upon a time, ours was shiny and new like this as well. And here it is now, obsolete as a vacuum cleaner. I actually rescued this from the bin after my wife tried to throw it out. And that's because I figured there was enough good stuff here to rebirth this as a remote control vehicle. Firstly, it's got an inbuilt rechargeable battery, as well as a charging dock. And I think that's pretty convenient. There's obviously wheels with suspension underneath, but there's also a myriad of sensors and other hardware, including micro switches, proximity sensors, multiple DC motors to run the suction, a camera on top, so these are all parts to salvage even if I don't reuse them. There's also a tidy power switch, so I just needed a way to control it. And that's where this guy comes in. This is my friend Sam Prentice. He has his own YouTube channel where he covers projects as well as testing 3D printers, Sam is just an entertaining chap. Check out this sequence he made when he was building and testing the Ratrig V Minion. His other specialty is as a droid designer and builder, and there's lots of videos on his channel showing off his skills and knowledge in this area. So who better to get advice from when it came to finding a method to hijack control of the robot vacuum cleaner? What Sam recommended was this board from Cytron. I thought the price was reasonable at $39, so I ordered a couple. As they claim, and as you'll see in a moment, this board is really plug and play, with zero coding needed to take an RC signal and use it to control a robot. And here it is. It's delightfully simple, as explained by the quick start guide. Power goes in, two motor outputs for tank treads or wheels, and then RC signal inputs on the other side. Here's a very simplified schematic of the robot vacuum cleaner as it is now. We have a central control unit that connects to the charging dock and then the inbuilt battery management system will charge the battery, including turning it off to prevent overcharging. That setup is something I very much want to keep. Connected to or on part of this control unit are things like Wi-Fi's, cameras, switch, sensors, the vacuum cleaner, none of which that we need, so we're going to disconnect and disregard them. The control unit has inbuilt motor drivers that it uses to run the two wheels, but we're going to hijack that and use the existing motors, controlling them instead with our introduced Cytron board. We'll take the power for that from the main control board, connect the RC receiver, and then supply our own wiring to the factory motors, giving us full control of the robot's movement, but retaining the nice features such as the battery and charging dock. So let's start with a proof of concept before we open up the vacuum. Previously, I had some videos about a silly string firing tank project. And to get that working, I built a custom Arduino module and wrote all the code myself to take the RC signal, process it, and convert it into movement. I remember it being quite an involved project, so how much easier would the Cytron board have made this? The answer is very. We have our voltage coming in from a battery, two motor outputs, and then the RC receiver plugging into the other end. And that was it. There was zero programming or coding to do as promised by the product webpage. The thing just worked and I can understand why this might be a popular choice for a droid or tank project. Thanks to Sam for a fantastic recommendation. So let's install this board in the vacuum cleaner. Step one is disassembly. And this was simply a matter of undoing screws, removing panels and seeing what was underneath. In this case, the rechargeable battery. Removing the vacuum elements was actually quite straightforward but otherwise it was hard to find screws because they were hidden for the product's aesthetics. But with some persistence, I found what I was after and step by step, I was able to get further and further inside the vacuum. When I got access to the main control board, I was relieved to find that all of the ports were nicely labeled and that let me know exactly what I could unplug and then remove. 
is one of the wheel drive units. As you can see, it's got nice grippy tires and integrated suspension. There's also encoders built onto the back of the DC motor, which allows the mainboard to know if a wheel is stuck or not. I broke out my multimeter and probed the board until I found the pins that I would take power from, and then I soldered on some wires that would power the Cytron board, later with an XT60 connector attached. With what I needed identified, I could then go about stripping off any components that were redundant, and this gave me a lot of spares to add to my drawers, including a timing belt, various proximity sensors, and a range of DC motors, some of them with gearboxes, and finally, a range of high quality micro switches. I plugged in the Cytron board for the first time and made a temporary connection to one of the drive units, confirming that everything was working as expected. The drive unit motors used the same JST PH connector as a NEMA 17 stepper motor, so I made up these little looms, plugged them into the motors, and ran the wires back to the Cytron board. And with everything connected and the board balancing on some foam, I was finally able to drive the robot vacuum cleaner with the RC transmitter. The Cytron board needed permanent mounting, so I made up this simple adapter bracket, which holds the new control board above the old one. With all of these components removed, this factory springs weren't a little bit too strong. So I conducted this very precise back-to-back -back comparison of spring tension, changing them to a pair which now sat the chassis level. Time to put some of this stuff back in place to make the chassis stronger. I figured the existing side panels were built tough and would fit perfectly. And the more of them I used, the less 3D printing I would have to do. Clearly my modifications meant they all weren't going to fit back on, but some planning and a Dremel tool made short work of that. And that gave me just enough clearance to get this top panel over my new setup, which in turn led to me being able to reinstall all of the exterior panels, with an obvious cutout at the front where the old vacuum system used to be. Time for another test, and that revealed that everything was well balanced, the new control electronics were working seamlessly, and the existing control board was still there to handle the battery charging, as well as indicate the battery level. I personally think a robot vacuum cleaner is a great base for a project. Imagine an R2-D2 style droid on top of this. I, however, went in a different direction. Ever since I decided to convert this robot vacuum cleaner, I knew I wanted to make a robotic version of Sam Prentice. Instead of the real Sam Prentice, I wanted Mecha Sam Prentice. This would also continue a running gag where we slip images of each other into our own videos. Although this time I'd be moving from 2D to 3D. The idea was to create a robot caricature version like Robin Williams in Bicentennial Man. So I loaded up one of his videos and really scrutinized his face. Sketching a concept for Mech Apprentice. To try and build this in 3D, I overlaid an image from my camera in Onshape with a low poly mask from Thingiverse just to use as a reference. I then tried to construct my robot head with a series of lofts, but truth be told, I just didn't have the talent. So it was time for plan B. Looking for a magic bullet, I searched Google for image to face generator and found this video from Markham 3D. He's a fellow Aussie and I've printed his designs on my videos before. He was showcasing software called Character Creator with a headshot plugin. And this seemed to do exactly what I was after. Back to Sam's channel on YouTube to take a good freeze frame to which I then imported into the trial version of Character Creator 3 with the Headshot plugin. The initial result wasn't perfect, but it was still impressive, particularly how it knew exactly what Sam's physique was like only from a photo of his head. It also gave me what felt like an irresponsible level of control over his facial expressions. And after a bit more time playing with settings, I think the likeness is quite remarkable. Remember this was generated just from a single photo. I even had a good crack at recreating Sam's signature eyebrow raise pose. This software was quite expensive, but I just couldn't find any alternatives that could do a good job, so I had to bite the bullet. I exported the mesh to Mesh Mixer, using a plane cut to sever the head from the body, and then using Make Solid to make the mesh watertight. I then uploaded the STL to Tinkercad, further segmenting the face into upper and lower half so I could later animate the jaw. After this, I largely hollowed out each section. It was finally time to 3D print, and I used the minimal support I thought I could get away with. These pieces were both printed on the CR10 Max, with the upper head portion taking around 10 hours, and the jaw taking just over 2 hours. After some cleanup, I knew that I was onto a winner, and by that I mean I was onto something truly uncanny. It was time to design some mounting parts. 
I tweaked the design for the two existing brackets, adding some extra holes for threaded inserts that I melted into place. I designed this plate wide enough to go behind the face, complete with an adjustable clamp to hold a servo in place that would actuate the jaw. I then designed this jaw support, which I imported into Tinkercad and used a Boolean cut to match the outer contour exactly to the inside of the jaw piece. I have to admit, I got a bit lucky here because everything fit perfectly on the first attempt, including the jaw having enough clearance to open and shut. I used hot glue and screws to attach the inner frame permanently. I then repeated this process to attach the upper head to the brace underneath, adding hot glue, positioning the head, and once the glue dried, removing the brace and adding more glue and screws as support. Components such as the jaw servo could then be bolted into place, and then the face brace bolted back down to the top of the vacuum cleaner with other bits and pieces in place, such as the RC receiver being cable tied down. The jaw is then prepped with a return spring to help take the load off the servo. Its frame is then flexed into position on the upper head, and then cable ties are added and snipped to ensure that it can't come out laterally. A bolt is screwed into the jaw, attached to a bent paper clip that is linked to the servo horn. And just like that, we have precise remote control of Sam's mouth. There's even a bit of functional clamping strength if it was ever needed. I double checked that the head was clear of the charging dock, took my creation for a drive, and although it was entirely functional, it felt like something was missing. And then I realized I no longer had a power indication light, so I added a couple of red LEDs in a great spot. I think this adds a bit of personality and it helps bring Mech Apprentice to life. What do you think? Although it certainly wasn't my intention, I think I've ended up making quite a functional Halloween prop. My dogs will be having nightmares about it at least. I will add a buck converter to power the servo properly, and who knows what I'll end up making to go on top of this platform. The real question is what the genre and name of the Sam Prentice video game should be. Make sure to let me know in the comment section. Thank you so much for watching and until next time, happy creating nightmare fuel with your projects. G'day, it's Michael again. If you like the video, then please click like. If you want to see more content like this in future, click subscribe and make sure you click on the bell to receive every notification. If you really want to support the channel and see exclusive content, become a patron. Visit my Patreon page. See you next time.